Hi, this is the National Weather Service office in Medford, Oregon, with a brief video just discussing some of the most recent wet and cool weather and what we can expect through uh, the rest of the weekend and then uh, a short outlook into the future. So more specifically, what will we cover? We'll talk about how much precipitation we've had in the past three days. We have a very cold system coming in tonight and want to discuss briefly the impacts expected from that. And then we'll we'll discuss the outlook for the next seven days with a brief brief uh, thought on uh, current La Nina conditions and what that may mean. So next, how it has it been? We're going to go over a few uh, quick tools to help you, uh, you know, to show you how wet it's been. And then in the future, if you want to look at it yourself, that's fine. So we're going to go to uh, weather.gov Medford and our Western Regional uh, folks have developed a really nice tool called the Weather and Hazards Viewer. If you click here, Observations and Hazards, it'll take you to a map of our forecast area, Southern Oregon and Northern California. And you can plot all kinds of things on this map, but what we're going to show you quickly is the uh, amount of precipitation we've received in the past 72 hours. So we see we have the hazards here. There is a winter weather advisory out for a lot of the forecast area, and I believe that's a freeze watch out as well for parts of the forecast area. But what we're going to do now is uh, click off that. We're more interested in precipitation, so we're going to click on observations. And just to show you, we'll, we'll put counties on there. Click on observations, precipitation. We want to go as far back as we can for these numbered values, 72 hours. These are the providers, what kind of observations we're interested in. And for our purposes, I think this is fine. A lot of the mountains have seen rain up until recently, so um, this will be OK. These are weather service uh, observation stations and then um, more fire weather related uh, observations. But they're maintained regularly. And we're going to choose all of them. And you can see here how much precipitation that's uh, uh, along the coast. You can zoom in. We'll just zoom in a little bit to the west. So you can see some of these hill, uh, coast range areas, higher terrain, up to almost five inches, four and a half inches there. Um, common one to three inches in the coast range area. You move to Roseburg, it's been um, uh, close to an inch. Uh, the eastern Douglas County Cascades, two inches plus. Rogue Valley, somewhere between 0.28, you know, about a quarter inch or so, maybe a little more in the Illinois Valley, one and a half inches. Even east of the Cascades, you can see some of the mountains um, received a lot of rainfall. Again, more rain up until recently when it's cooled off and now it's turned to snow. Lesser amounts the further south and east you go, which is normal for climatology. It's a drier part of the forecast area, but also with just this type of system, the way the winds were, it focused on the Cascades and the Coast Range. So now we're going to just take a peek at where we're at um, compared to normal for the water year. So we're going to click on this precipitation tracker there. And it'll pull up you know, since October 1st. And again, this is missing the rainfall from today because this was uh, using the reports issued last night. It'll be updated later today, but you can see we're, uh, we've dipped, you know, 19% below normal. So we've improved some in Medford here. Um, still very low, much below normal in Mount Shasta City, but generally 20% below normal from, you know, Medford area westward. Of course, the mountains have seen mo most of the precipitation recently. I do want to also highlight, if I go down to the very bottom, I want to highlight these monthly climate summaries that that uh, are being issued monthly. And my coworker just, just did one recently, and I'll 
change that to April, but um, the wording, but uh, we have the April summary right there. And, you know, this April has been significant. So I encourage you to take a peek at this. It's got a lot of useful information. Now let's go to the snowpack. So we'll go back to kind of our home page here. And we'll look at the uh, snowfall and snow depth. And here's our snow pack per NRCS. And you can see it's close to 80% of normal in general across Southern Oregon or Southwestern Oregon. And that's good. But again, this time of year, we're just not normally seeing as much snowpack period because it's been diminishing. So it's, it's not as significant as having closer to normal snowpack in April, but still below normal, still drought conditions. So beneficial precipitation, but not drought ending uh, by any means in our area. Now, lastly, we can just take a peek. Let's just take a peek at the, at the webcam at Crater Lake National Park. And you can see here lots of new snow even snow covering the roadway there. So they're still, uh, still, you know, getting significant snow. They'll get some more tonight. So now what about the cold system coming up? So I want to take a peek at our satellite imagery here. We're going to click on radar and satellite. Satellite. And let's do, um, I think the water vapor imagery is a nice zoomed out method of of kind of seeing what's on the horizon and a well-defined low pressure is moving right towards our area. So precipitation will increase tonight into tomorrow as this low, you can see it's just trajectory is right towards us and it's very cold, low system. Uh, I'm going to show another tool here. This is called the Climate Real Analyzer, I think by uh, University of Maine. And it's really neat because you can see um, We'll start from the home page to show you how to do it, but go to, uh, we'll start at the beginning here, sorry. Let's just click on the home page. There you go. Climate Reanalyzer. Click on today's weather maps, and then you're going to do two meter temperature anomaly. That means what, you know, compared to normal, what's it like? You can see the globe picture here in Pacific Northwest here we are in Oregon, much below normal, and that's a big pocket of cold air, and it's just going to be continuing to move over us here in the next few days. And I just really encourage you um, to check out the uh, the local forecasts, uh, whether at Gov Medford, and take out look your for your local forecast for low temperatures the next few days, especially if you're growing things. So I want to transition back to our our PowerPoint slide here, and highlight the impacts from this system arriving here. So again, it's going to be a cold Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day, maybe a, a hot beverage might be a good thing on Sunday. Uh, the The impacts range from mountain snow. Um, it's going to be hard for snow to accumulate on the roadways, especially during the daytime, but nighttime, if it comes down hard enough, um, the potential for, for travel impacts there. So we have some winter weather advisories out now. Thunderstorms, very cold air above the surface, and with that May sun angle, uh, even though it's going to be cold at the surface, it's going to be much colder above the surface, so it's unstable. It's going to create some thunderstorms. Lastly, cold mornings, Monday through Wednesday for growers and agriculture, so please stay tuned to the uh, forecast for your low temperatures. Two more things to cover briefly. Here is the general um, plot, uh, the showing the air mass temperatures throughout the next uh, eight to 10 days. You can see here, uh, it's dipping down. This is uh, tomorrow morning, Sunday morning here, um, right above where my cursor is. And you can see it dips down, snow levels dipping below Sexton Pass. Now, we're not expecting impacts because the road temperatures are warm, but snow could be seen as low as 2,500 feet or so, where's the, where the snow levels forecast to be. Um, and with precipitation, we expect, again, some, some lowering snow. And that stays with us through Monday morning. Very cold air mass, right? Even Tuesday morning, still cold. Wednesday morning, uh, maybe some clearing skies might even, you know, help the atmosphere get even colder at the surface. So we're going to have to be on alert 
for several days and the old adage of planting around Mother's Day will not work this year unless you plan on protecting your plants. And then finally, we begin to warm up a little system moving in Thursday, perhaps, and then maybe some warming and drying towards next weekend, and then a little uncertain. So there's still some uncertainty out there, but that's a general idea. Lastly, I do want to show you um, a, uh, these, these are all the, um, the Oceanic Nino Index. Remember El Nino, uh, and La Nina just refer to the temperatures in the eastern and central tropical Pacific waters. And the warmer they are compared to normal, it tends to be an El Nino year, the cooler La Nina. This type of weather is that we're receiving now cold, kind of showery, uh, cascades getting some snow. That's, that's a kind of a La Nina type pattern. You can see here, these are all the April um, oceanic Nino index numbers, and it's the coldest it's been for that value for April. Um, you have to go back to 1985 to, to see that cold, negative 1.13. You can see where my cursor is here. So it is an anomalously cold eastern and central Pacific Ocean waters right now, and we're kind of seeing that pattern. So it's expected to continue too, La Nina. So now, what, what that means for us specifically, uh, it's, it, it's a range of possibilities. Obviously, we were under La Nina this winter, and we had two months of dry weather. So um, it just uh, it's, it's uncertain, but it's, it's noteworthy, those temperatures. So I'm going to end it with this. Uh, thank you very much, and bye-bye.